Hello if you're new to this channel and welcome back if you've been watching our videos for some time. In this video we will cover the identity of the 13th Dalai Lama and his mysterious connection with Russia, any potential desire of Tibet to join the Russian Empire, and the involvement of black magic in his death. Keep watching and please subscribe and share this video. The 13th Dalai Lama was born in the village of Taktalagdun, which is one day away by car from Lhasa, on May 27, 1876, to parents Kunga Rinchen and Lobsan Dolma, a peasant couple. When the previous 12th Dalai Lama Trinligyatso died at the young age of 20 in 1875, his face is said to have turned toward the southeast, which was taken as a sign that the new incarnation would be born in their direction. This was confirmed by the Nichung Oracle and the eighth Panchen Lama, Tanpai Wanchu. The Oracle also provided precise details and foretold the names of the parents. Many auspicious signs accompanied the birth of the 13th Dalai Lama. One year earlier, an earthquake had struck the Dakpo area, and all the houses in the village where the Dalai Lama was born were destroyed or badly damaged. Only the house of the future Dalai Lama remained intact. The boy's mother is said to have received many dreams prior to his birth, indicated that he was the rebirth of the Dalai Lama. Other mystical signs are said to have appeared, such as a tree flowering out of season and rainbow lights in the sky. The newborn is said to have had a fair complexion and a parasol-like head with shining black hair and a single strand of white hair in the center. The Dalai Lama's early years were governed by formality and a strict regime of learning. He was attended by elderly monks who taught him writing and reading, and as he became proficient, His Holiness began his formal training in Buddhist scriptures. During his childhood, the Dalai Lama also suffered from various illnesses, the most serious being in 1882 when he fell ill during a smallpox epidemic in Lhasa. The full name of the 13th Dalai Lama was the Great 13th Navang Lapsang Tuptan Gyatso Didral Chokki Namjal, abbreviated to Tuptan Gyatso. Until the age of 20, the 13th Dalai Lama devoted himself to religious studies and refused to assume political power despite repeated requests. When the threat from Britain approached Tibet, he was told that the time had come for him to serve the country not only as religious, but also as a political leader. By 1900, the British government had started receiving reports from the missionaries based in Tibet and on the Sikkim border. These reports claim that there were hundreds of Russian military advisors in Lhasa and that the Dalai Lama and the Tsar had formed a secret alliance. Lhasa was eager to establish contacts with other powers. People close to the 13th Dalai Lama were particularly concerned about British interest in Tibet because they feared that the British were hostile to Buddhism. They were also worried that a British presence in Tibet would involve Christian missionizing. On the other hand, the British were suspicious of Bhagwan Darjeev. Lama Bhagwan Darjeev played a crucial role in bridging Russia and Tibet. He was not only a Buddhist monk, but also a close associate and study partner of the 13th Dalai Lama. Darjeev served as a minister in the Dalai Lama's government and acted as a diplomatic intermediary between Tibet and the Russian Empire. In the 1910s, he made significant contribution to strengthening the relationship among Russia, Mongolia, and Tibet. He promoted the establishment of Buddhist schools and founded the first Buddhist temple in St. Petersburg, Russia, which opened its doors in 1915. During his visits to Kalmykia and Buratia, Lama Gvandarjiev worked diligently for two years to introduce and establish Buddhism in those regions. It was during one of those visits that he encountered a gifted student named Geshe Wang Yal. We have a video about Geshe Wang Yal and his influence on Tibetan Buddhism in the West. Recognizing Geshe Wang Yal's potential, Lama Gvandarjiev provided assistance for him to travel to Tibet and study at Drepun Goman Monastery, where Nawan Wangyal eventually obtained his Geshe degree. In the summer of 1901, Darjeev arrived in St. Petersburg with a letter from the 13th Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama's letter was formal and expressed his appreciation for the Tsar's treatment of his Buddhist subjects, mainly Mongolian living within the Greater Russian Empire. The letter from the Tibetan government and Dalai Lama explicitly solidified Russian support against the British. When the British learned of the purpose of their chief's visit, they viewed it as a real threat to the security of British India. At this time, during what is often called the Great Game period of Asian imperial and colonial rivalries, the British were particularly concerned about countering what they were perceiving as growing Russian influence and territorial aspirations. 
His Holiness the 13th Dalai Lama pursued a cautious, yet deliberate foreign policy and made significant contributions to improving the lives of people within the country. For his accomplishments, he earned a reputation as a skilled politician, a natural diplomat, and a liberator. He instituted discipline with a spiritual circle by strictly prohibiting tobacco, opium, alcohol, and games for monks. He increased the number of government officials to prevent the concentration of power among the monastics. He mandated the statesmen dress in Tibetan clothing. He enacted anti-corruption legislation. He established the police force. He streamlined the transport tax. He reduced interest rates on loans. He modernized the Tibetan army with guidance from specialists from Russia, Japan, and England. He introduced the use of telegraph, electricity, and automobiles. He initiated the production of banknotes and stamps. Through His Holiness the 13th Dalai Lama's life, he had had reoccurring and disturbing dreams which he would record in his notebook. When the Dalai Lama was 13 years old, he recorded a dream in which a black man visited and told him that he would face many difficulties and that he would be forced to travel to Mongolia, China, and India. The figure in the dream also prophesied that he would live longer than any other Dalai Lama. The prophecy appeared to be true later in his life. In 1900, when the 13th Dalai Lama was 25, he fell ill frequently, had a low appetite, and grew physically weak. According to one account of the incident, the Dalai Lama noticed that his health deteriorated whenever he wore boots presented to him by Tertong Sogyal. Tertong Sogyal was an Nyingma treasure revealer and a teacher of the Dalai Lama. In 1985, Regent Demo from Tangeling Monastery stepped aside as the Dalai Lama assumed power in Tibet. Dema had held the influential regency for nearly a decade, overseeing both the Dalai Lama's spiritual education and the country's political affairs. Tangilin Monastery, led by Demo, possessed the largest estate in Lhasa, which grew even larger, wealthier during his regency. When the Dalai Lama took the throne, discontent brewed among Tangilin's followers due to the loss of political and economic power. Norbu, regent's nephew and estate manager, was particularly upset by this shift. He believed that if anything were to happen to the Dalai Lama, the regency might return to his uncle. Poisoning was considered, but gaining access to those who served the Dalai Lama's food proved challenging. So during a ritual at their family home in Lhasa, nephew Norbu conspired with a black magician named Namjul to regain power. Namjul, who had gained influence in Lhasa through his association with a Turton, a Tibetan treasure revealer, used his spiritual talents to manipulate aristocratic families. Namjul agreed to nephew Norbu's plan to eliminate an unnamed target, believing it would help Tagneling regain power. It is important to notice that Namjul didn't know who his black magic was targeting. Only in the process of the dark ritual, Namjul realized that the target it was Dalai Lama and refused to write the Dalai Lama's name on a deadly diagram. He didn't stop nephew Norbu, he just wrote the name himself. During the same time, the Dalai Lama began experiencing ominous dreams, prompting fears for his safety. The Nichung Oracle warned to threats of his life, leading to rituals and precautions. Eventually, the Oracle mentioned danger related to a pair of boots. The pair of boots with black magic diagram was given to Torton Sogyal, the Dalai Lama's teacher, who experienced bleeding nose right after wearing them. During the ceremony, the Dalai Lama received his cursed boots, leading to his illness. Tortan Sogyal, in a fit of anger, tore the boots apart and removed the cursed talisman, and this was written on it. Suppress Tuptin Gyatso, born in the year of the fire red. Tortan Sogyal, a trusted spiritual figure, realized that nephew Norbu had soon a curse into the heel of one of the boots, intending to harm the Dalai Lama. In 1926, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was created in Tibet. The Tibetan army was reorganized, armed, and equipped by the British. The 13th Dalai Lama began to rely more and more on the army and surrounded himself with military figures of a pro-British orientation. This caused discontent among the Lamas, who form an anti-British, initially pro-Chinese party led by the Panchen Lama. In 1924, the 13th Dalai Lama excommunicated the Panchen Lama and expelled him from Tibet. Subsequently, the Panchen Lama became an agent of Japan and the internal struggle in Tibet was largely a reflection of Anglo-Japanese rivalry in Central Asia. The Dalai Lama died on September 17, 1933. The death of the 13th Dalai Lama raised suspicion that he was poisoned by pro-Japanese Lamas. But before His Holiness the Dalai Lama died, his close 
close disciple and a friend wrote this letter. In the large assembly hall in which the Dalai Lama took the vows of teaching the Vinaya, a canopy was always hanging over his forehead. However, in the year of water bird, in the ninth month, on the day of celebration of the descent of the Buddha from paradise, having bestowed the vows as before initial and full monasticism, his holiness said, from now on, the canopy does not need to be hung up, be sure to remove it, which was clearly a sign of his imminent death. From that time on, numerous unlucky almonds began to appear. A vulture landed in the center of a stone-lined place in Changling. The earth trembled, dust rained. On the day of the twelfth of the tenth months, water poured from the mouth of the three sea monster, decorating the corners of the eaves of the Lhasa temple. Before His Holiness, 13th Dalai Lama died, he predicted the invasion of Tibet and announced that he would die early in order that his successor would be old enough to act as a leader for the Tibetan people at the time the country was invaded. He passed away in Lhasa, in not long after making this prediction. At the end of his life, in 1933, his Holiness the 13th Dalai Lama Tupten Gyatso, foreseeing the onset of a dark era in Tibet, predicted, very soon, creatures act will occur in this land of snow, both from outside and from within. At this time, if we do not dare to defend our territory, our spiritual persons, including the victorious father and son, Dalai Lama and Panchen Lama, may be destroyed without a trace. The property and power of our Lankas, residents of reincarnated Lamas, and monks may be taken away. In addition, our political system, designed by the three great drama lords, will disappear without a trace. The property of all people, high and low, will be taken away, and people will be forced to become slaves. All living beings will have to enter endless days of suffering, and will be riddled with fear. Such a time is coming. Thank you for watching this video. May the blessing of the Triple Gem always be with you. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video.